Hi, I'm Mark Sappenfield, editor of The Monitor, and wanted to thank you for coming here today to our new Community Connect, connect, <laughs> community connect event. Sorry, a little bit of a tongue twister there. It's our attempt to get you closer, to make you feel more intimately connected to The Monitor and its mission. And we at The Monitor feel that engaging with the news doesn't have to mean losing your sense of hope or humanity. And that's what brings us to this event here today. We are joined uh, by Sadia Sheikh, who is joining us from India, from Mumbai this morning, and will be turning on her uh, video and audio soon to join us. There she is. Hello, Sadia. Uh, the Monitor, in so many ways, was founded to tell the stories of people like Sadia. We found out about her originally when a freelancer of ours in India told us of her story about how she was determined to open up a library for children in her community, uh, overcoming pr uh, prejudice and the pandemic to do it. But this conversation we're going to have today is going to be so much more than just what one amazing young woman did in a country that to many of us is very far away. Um, when we first reached out to Sadia to see if we could do this webinar with her, uh, we kind of kept pressing her for why it was important that she did these things. Why was it important that she founded this library? Why was it important that she fought the prejudice in her towns? Why was it important that she fought for Muslim rights in her country? And there came a point at which she kind of stopped and looked at the camera and she kind of said, well, then what's the point of studying uh, with the studying that she's doing in her university? You know, like some of her fellow students, she could just, you know, keep her head down, get good grades, get a good job. But then she said, but then we forget the humanity. And that's why we brought Sadia to talk to all of us today. She is not going to let her country or any of us forget the humanity. Uh, her story is particularly about India and about what it's like at this particular point in India when so many Muslims are made to feel like second-class citizens but we at The Monitor feel that her courage, her determination, and her grace point to ways forward no matter who you are and no matter what problem your community is facing. So let's just call today a master class in humanity. And we're very, very grateful to have you here today, Sadia. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, before we begin, let me just um, have Dave, uh, who you know very well and kind of reached out to you at first, just run over some ground rules about uh, how this session is going to go and so people know how to ask questions when it comes time for that. Hi, everybody. Uh, we would love to have all of you participate by sending in your questions for our panelists during this event. To submit a question, click on the Q&A icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen and type your question. If you're on a smartphone, you may have to tap your screen to bring up the Q&A icon. I'll be monitoring your questions and comments while the panelists are talking, and I'll be back later to share your questions. Thank you. Great. So let's just jump straight in. Um, a lot of you will know about some of the amazing things that Sazia has done in some of the literature that we sent out ahead of this event. Uh, but it really begins with the story of her founding this library in her hometown um, in uh, rural India and how she was determined to make sure that children in that town were able to access education at a, at a time and a place when they didn't have a lot of access to education. Uh, so I, I do want to start there a little bit, Sadia, is you grew up in Mumbai, which is you know the big city, one of the biggest cities in the world and the big city of India. Uh, but your your kind of your your family has ties back to this smaller town in Bihar, which is one of the most impoverished areas of India. Um, so during the time of the lockdown, your family decided that it would move from Mumbai back to Bihar to spend the lockdown there. And it seemed like when you got to Bihar, you kind of had this revelation. What did you see when you were there? What made you think this place needs a library? Uh, when we went uh, to our hometown, uh, at that time, you know, uh, in my mind, there was a lot of questions because of that anti-citizenship protest also, as I traveled to different states and I saw 
many people i met with many uh, young girls like me and i found that you know there are many young girls who are uh, talented and uh, they want to study or they want to uh, develop but they don't have a stage or a platform to uh, to showcase their talent and uh, at the same time when i uh, went to my hometown i saw that uh, you know uh, like um, financially strong people like uh, me i mean i'm i'm not too much strong but uh, uh, still i'm able to um, you know uh, i'm able to migrate from bihar to mumbai for having a good uh, quality education but there are lots of people uh, who cannot afford this so what about them like you know uh, there are uh, according to the research i found uh, that bihar is the most illiterate state of india uh, even uh, it is uh, it comes under most uh, it comes under most uh, Mm, you know like unemployment rate is also uh, right. yeah uh, it's also bigger than so i just look around myself myself or uh, i i looked around my village and i found that uh, there are colleges but it's uh, you know it's it's so far from the village there are schools uh, private schools but it's too costly and there are government schools where uh, there are not much facilities like we are having in our schools uh, you know teachers are coming not coming people don't care uh, yeah. and even parents don't care whether their children are going to school or not because they have the the main problem they have is lack of um, you know lack of access of uh, employment or uh, they they are lacking in money so they just want that uh, uh we we don't want our ch- uh, children to engage in uh, education or something like that instead of that we want our children to help us in our uh, employment like yeah. in field in work fields, so that we can yeah. yeah so that we can earn more we d- we, we don't have access to uh, to fill our empty stomach then how can we send our children to uh, to get education so i i thought that if we help um if we help simply one boy or a one girl so you know will progress so slowly so what can we do to help at a time the whole village so uh, yeah uh, so i i uh, the the library idea came in my mind like if we collect the books and keep in it in one place so i think at a one time many people can take advantage of it right there and you mentioned no restriction yeah oh sorry go ahead it's okay uh, i'm like there will be no restrictions that only uh, you can use it or you can't use it right like whether you are a girl or boy or uh, from any age group you can use it whenever you want and you um uh, we, we at the monod have written many stories about uh women and young girls in india and the challenges that are faced specifically in rural communities like the one in bihar that you're talking about we actually wrote a story uh recently or at least in the past few years where there was one girl who told us um you are female you are not for studying and working and her mother was a child bride so this is generational things that that women and girls are trying to overcome what did you find i mean this was certainly something where you were stepping outside of your home you were doing something very publicly um what did you find in terms of a reaction from your community uh well i too found many comments like you know uh people are not uh, talking in front of my face but uh behind me or in front of my father or, or my mother like uh, why are you uh, letting your ch- uh, daughter do this thing what if you um, what if you uh, get difficulties in finding a uh, groom for her mm-hmm. <laughs> like this type of question right. my parents were facing so uh, like uh, you know a- a- this is enough how much you will let your daughter to study now it's it's uh, like it's enough for her now a- it's her age for getting married mm, why you are letting her do all these things uh, like this type of questions and how old are you now i'm 19 year old now 19 year old um yeah. and is it 
Is it hard to put those things aside? I mean, uh, on one hand, you're clearly a very driven person and wanting to do good. But on the other hand, you know, I'm sure the doubts and the people kind of complaining to your family, I mean, does that have any effect? Um, actually, people were, you know, literally people were uh, tried to, um, you know, stop me uh, from uh, building that library. Like uh, some people even stopped carpenters to uh, do their work in library. So they would, uh, they even, would actually go to the carpenters and tell them you shouldn't be doing this? Yeah, even, wow. you know, uh, uh, in starting, we don't have chairs for children. Mm -hmm. So there was one, um, like, uh, it was also a, some uh, organization type. So they have 10 chairs, which are supposed to be uh, continuously there uh, on that place only from a long time. Yeah. And no one was using the chairs. So I took them, uh, I was like, no one is using, we can use it. So uh, after some days, uh, we got to know that you you don't have, uh, like, you don't have the permission to use these chairs. It's they your took library. The away. Right. Like, it's your library, you are building it, then you have to uh, buy your own chairs and use, uh, use them. Even some volunteers who were ready to teach uh, children were ready to give uh, us some time. So uh, I got to know uh, when I came back to Mumbai that, uh, you know, they were being denied for uh, giving their time in library. And what, what do you think that they were, were they scared that you were going to give other, other girls in the, in the village ideas or did they just feel it was really inappropriate and so they wanted to stop you? What, what was it that they were trying to stop or that they were afraid of, you think? You know, uh, what I think is uh, like, um, People think, most of the people think that in Islam, uh, if women are wearing hijab or women have the rule of wearing hijab, it means they can't have access of education. Hmm. And uh, yeah, and uh, even in Muslim, uh, there are many Islamic scholars who don't give, uh, you know, education, uh, what I can say, they don't give uh, briefly education, like briefly knowledge about yeah. something. Like, if one scholar uh, tell me that, uh, listen, you have to wear hijab and you, ha you have to be in a parda, so you can't go outside. But they don't to, uh, tell us that you can go, you can get education by having, uh, by wearing burqa too. So what people uh, take it as, you know, we have to be in uh, parda, so we can't have access of education. So uh, yeah, I can say that it's because of lack of education and some people don't want that, you know, if she'll know, uh, uh, then uh, sh if she'll know the, you know, uh, if she'll know the uh, reality, what Islam says, then she will be step outside of their house, she will get education, then she won't be in control of us. Yeah, I, I think, yeah. So just so because the, there's the expectation that you dress modestly in Islam, sometimes that's taken to mean that you shouldn't do all these other things, uh, you know, and the idea that if you take that first step and you get education, then, you, you know, then what, how can we control her? Um, that's really interesting. Um, yeah. Do you, um, just tell me a little bit about, um, what you've seen in terms of how the library has been used. Uh, are there any, examples that you can think of or stories that you can think of of children or even adults who have come to the library um, and the way it's being used now that it's there? Yeah, uh, like uh, uh, I have one story. Um, that boy is in my relative only. Uh, they are, uh, he have five sisters and uh, three brothers and uh, one mother. Uh, his uh, father was died two years back. So um, his only elder brother is the source of earning. Yes. So we are facing lots of difficulties right now as uh, the daughters are in age of getting married and a lot of things are there. So the boy wants to become a doctor and he was getting good education uh, before his uh, father died. Uh, but after that, he stopped getting that education. Like, uh, he was going to school, but he don't have access of uh, uh, tuitions or, uh, you know, that uh, notes for preparing for his, right. uh, yeah. The resources, just there, are, there aren't many resources at the schools that he can go to. Yeah. So when we opened that library, 
he was so happy he he even came to me and i was like uh, you know you have done a great job and i was like uh, just now i started I, i don't think so you know uh, that people will uh, take it in a good uh, reaction or in a good manner right but i was i was so happy after listening him like you know uh, you have helped me a lot by uh, building this library uh because we have uh, access of medical uh, books also mm-hmm. not uh, too much but have little to at least to prepare for uh, neat exams so now he can um, you know t- he can uh, use that ncrt books which is used for uh, medical preparations he can use uh, all that medical books notes easily uh, and even he used to sit two hours every day is visiting the library every day two hours he's sitting there he's studying there very he's he's very hard working mm. so uh yeah and that you know that uh, after looking at him i was like yeah i'm doing something good i i am able to change someone's life and uh, so this motivates me a lot and the second thing is uh, recently uh, from another state uttar pradesh um one boy he's from political background i mean his families are from political backgrounds and even he is uh, he also going to be in a politics but uh, he he just mentioned that he's inspired by me and he also started a community library like me. great yeah so that was the biggest uh, you know biggest thing for me like i've really inspired someone for doing this great thing now because of that library i hope that many people can get benefit like like uh from my library people are getting benefits many young girls are coming especially uh, I, i that the most uh, the thing of which i was uh, you know i was in uh, stress like whether girl will come or not yes the parents will allow their daughters to come or not but uh, you know there are more than 100 students who are coming every day oh wow now we are lacking in we are lacking in place so we have to like uh those who are so mischievous uh kids we tell them <laughs> you have to go uh, hmm. we'll we'll take you next time like this cuz it's a small room uh, i can only imagine yeah. how you have to kind of cycle them in over time to get them all yeah. in we are using that outside place also yeah we have asked to them and we are using outside place also but still we are lacking in place so they're like uh, we'll take you next time when That's we'll great. rebuild it yeah and for those um um bihar is right it's the it's a state in northern india that's right next to another the largest state in india which is called uh sidia mentioned called uttar pradesh and those are generally seen as being two of maybe the most impoverished states in india and so it's just wonderful to hear about how your idea i know you also want to spread it within bihar that you want to have these libraries in every district within the state but it sounds like your idea is now spreading even to other states where it could be really needed yeah many people are uh, messaging me like uh, you are doing a great and we also want to start the same library like you have done so we want an idea can you give us some idea how how you have started or how you are doing this so this this makes me feel so happy one thing you said when when we were talking earlier and you were also talking to Dave earlier before we set up this event you were talking about and you mentioned this really briefly about your excitement about uh, girls coming because especially within the town in Bihar uh, where you set this up um parents can be scared to send their girls out because sometimes you say uh young boys and young men who are unemployed will just you know sit in the market and taunt girls and it's not a very it can feel very unsafe and one of the yeah. things that you wanted to do was to create a place where girls could feel safe and go out tell me a little bit about how you've seen that happen oh uh, well uh in starting when i went there when i went in village i saw that lots of young boys are sitting uh, outside the shop or you know on bike uh, having chatting and commenting whoever are passing from their road whether it's a girl or woman or anyone so that feels me so uncomfortable like if i am feeling uncomfortable coming from a mumbai then uh, i mean like why the parents can't feel uncomfortable then how can how can any parent feel safe to let their uh, daughters go outside the house or uh, where the crime rate of women is increasing day by day 
so i just thought that uh, even there was a problem of um, lots of uh, boys are uneducated and because they are doing so they are doing all this nonsense things <laughs> so i i thought that if i start a library maybe the boys were sitting uh, on the road or outside the shops they can sit in library they can mm. read something even one line if they read maybe uh, it can change their mind or they can do something else so um, yeah so uh, i i i started and uh, i've seen now that lots of young boys who were used to sit on road or sit on um, a bike and all they now they are now sitting they are visiting library they are reading newspaper at least they are uh, reading magazines and uh, yeah and they are like changing that's great not much but still uh, <laughs> little slowly. by little little yeah, by little little by little and uh, why parents are feeling safe to send their children to library because we have uh, kept two uh, teachers and they mm. both are oh, uh, right. yeah both are lady teachers uh, who are uh, teaching them basic uh, skill development and like uh, uh, personality development i can say wow. uh, yeah we have kept some toys for kids so that they can took interest and come to library that's <laughs> so, wonderful yeah so that's and, why parents are taking interest and in sending the daughters without any hesitation or fear that's great and and you've mentioned i mean important to this conversation too is that obviously uh you've mentioned that you're a young uh muslim woman and this is a particularly important moment for uh muslims in india uh you mentioned very early in the conversation uh, the citizenship bill and that is uh, a bill that was passed by the Indian legislature in 2019. And for any listeners who are in the United States, there's some similarities to what's going on with the dreamers, the immigrants who were uh, brought to the United States illegally as children. But in the Indian case, this is the citizenship bill is about promising citizenship to people who fled either Afghanistan or Pakistan or Bangladesh before 2015. But very conspicuously, the bill does not include Muslims. It, inclu it includes Hindu, it includes Christian, it includes Jains, it includes Buddhists, but it does not include Muslims. And that bill then led to these massive protests across the country with critics saying that it violated India's constitution, which was founded on these ideals of religious tolerance. And, and I was actually a reporter in India for three years. And I remember, uh, this was back in 2007, um, there was a report that came out that basically said that uh, ignorance and prejudice had made Muslims uh, an underclass on, on par with the lowest Hindu castes, which was an amazing thing because for so long these questions were just swept under the rug and it felt like a moment when it could finally be brought up and kind of the, 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 the plight of Muslims, the issues of prejudice could be dealt with, but in many ways it's gone the opposite way. And there's a new um, party that's in power that is basically standing on India being a Hindu country. And it's done lots of different things. There's one Muslim majority state, Jammu and Kashmir. It has taken away its authority, its autonomy. It passed the citizenship bill. And in Uttar Pradesh, the state that, uh, that, that you were talking about earlier, Sadia, uh, they actually have pushed through a law that makes it illegal to uh, change your religion for the purposes of marriage because politicians were spreading these false rumors that Muslims were forcibly trying to convert Hindu women uh, by marriage and they were even calling it love jihad. So it's a really, um, uh, you know, it's a really important moment in India thinking about being, having, maintaining its religious tolerance, maintaining a sense of uh, Muslims who are about 12% of the population, which in India means about 200 million citizens, a major part of the population. Sadia, maybe you mentioned that kind of you going through these protests and these understanding around this citizenship bill that happened in India kind of awakened you. Uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about how this protest, how this uh, activism around this citizenship bill and its exclusion of Muslims kind of has has gotten you more aware of what you need to, to do and to be in the country. Yeah. So basically, uh, you know, the day before the, in the bill was passed, we were studying uh, democracy as a, as a chapter in our philosophy subject. And, my, uh, uh, and the second day, 
the bill was finally passed and still we were discussing about that democracy chapter that what exactly it is and uh, i attend that uh, six our parliament speech that uh, that uh, what is uh, actually caa bill is and why they are passing it everything and so the caa I, uh, is, is just another a caa is another name for this is chip bill just so everyone understands go ahead please yeah. so uh, when uh, when we were uh, learning the uh, meaning of democracy and what it is and uh, so i was just confused and i asked my professor that if this is the meaning of democracy then that uh, the bill which is passed in parliament is unconstitutional so she told me like uh, she told me that uh, yeah you you have raised a good question and i was happy that finally i'm going to clear my doubt but then she told uh, you'll feel like i am supporting bjp but you know uh, that bill was passed is it is good for us because it was threatening our our nation security blah 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 and bjp yeah. is the party that currently runs india that sees itself yeah. as primarily a hindu party please continue yeah and uh, on the next day uh, on 15 december i've uh, heard about the jamia incident and that because, is a uh, that's something maybe say a little bit about that it's, it was an incident that happened at a muslim university yeah jamia uh, millia islamia university is a muslim university uh and uh, they came out for protest against this anti citizenship act and uh, that protest turned into violations uh you know p- uh, police were entered in university they thrown stones pelted stones pelted uh, you know, that gun they even uh, bu- uh they even shoot guns and uh, students were sitting in library they were studying they were preparing for exams and they beaten brutally by police and you know the images were sharing on instagram whatsapp and we we are sitting at home and we were watching that images and videos and it was so disturbing and i was i was just uh, you know i i i was just frightened at the time like they are students they were just protesting against something they don't agree with and this is a constitutional right why they were beaten so badly by the police or by the uh, i i'll say it was a state sponsorship brutality and i was so like what is happening so next day i i went to college and i told my friends that you know we should come out on road and we we should also protest in support of the students because whatever happened it was wrong maybe tomorrow it will come to us also if we shut our mouth now so when my uh, when my uh, staff members and teachers heard about this they called me in staff room and they were like sadia what are you talking about mm-hmm. we've heard that you are talking about going in protest and uh, and all so i was like yes uh, uh, we are going in support of that jamia millia student uh, uh, so my teachers like no you 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 are not allowed to go in protest and i was shocked that why so they're like uh, if don't ask so many questions if you want to go in protest then you'll have to face uh, the consequence of it like you maybe you will be restricted from uh, college so i was like okay i'm okay with it because hmm. i'm going in protest because it's it's my personal responsibility i'm not going uh, uh, as a rizvi i'm from rizvi college so i told them that that i'm not going as a rizvi college student i'm going there with my personal identity because i am also the citizen of this country not just a student of this college so i am going and even in even uh, if in case tomorrow i'll i'll uh, you know i'll lock up in detention center will you come to them and tell that she is a student of rizvi college please let her go don't uh, lock her up in detention camp so my teachers were like how are you talking <laughs> yeah you're on your own <laughs> i was you know i was i think i was in so much stress and whatever comes in my mind i just spoke so uh, and i have a good relationship with my uh, teachers because of my extra curricular activities so i uh, yeah 
तो माई टीचर्स पर लाइक ओके इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गो गो बट डोंट किप एनी आइडेंटिटी ऑफ यूर कॉलेज एंड लाइक ओके या सो आई वेंट एंड दैट फर्स्ट प्रोटेस्ट हैपन आई वेंट टू द पुलिस फॉर टेकिंग परमिशन फॉर हैविंग दिस प्रोटेस्ट and at that time i was 17 year old so i i was also having a fear of you know like you are teenage teenager so will not give you permission to uh, um, attend this protest but i t- told them lie that i am 18 year old uh, when they asked me <laughs> and luckily they didn't ask me about my identity card or something so uh, like we've got the permission we've uh, we've um, organized that protest and lots of people have joined that protest and in that protest i come to know about more like what is caa and uh, what is the situation of muslims in india and why this government is doing all these things um, before that i was seriously not involved in any kind of political issues and even not uh, uh, i was not, not also reading news daily newspapers or any magazine but after that incident i i uh, you know i used to na- uh, read daily newspapers magazines whatever is happening and after that i uh, i got a call from one of my uh, uh, professor who was the ex professor of my college and he was like uh, there is a program going to happen would you like to give speech on the topic of nrc and ca and i was like yes of course i i love to give speech and then i attend that program and i gave speeches like how this uh, citizenship amendment act is going to affect not only uh, just muslim but also uh, non muslims and right. especially women because whatever yes. issues happen even disaster or uh, anything women and s- women are the one who is suffering a lot right and no one is talking about that yeah what the one thing i would i'd love to i mean i have many more questions i would love to ask but i would love to give a chance to our readers to ask questions um one thing i would like to say before they have a chance to do that is we do have a little bit of celebrity here you become a little bit of a celebrity sadia um dave passed along an article that was on a website that follows the um news of underrepresented groups in india and there's a headline on it. it's called twocircles.net you might be aware of this sadia but it, it, the the headline is titled meet 10 women who are spearheading movement against the caa in india the caa again being the citizenship bill and there you are right at the top uh as one of the women who is who is being the the largest uh spearheading of the movement uh to for rights and all of these things so uh as you mentioned you have gone around india you've been to how many states giving giving speeches on this issue uh not much but uh, more than six or seven states right so you've been you've yeah. been all around so um yeah. she's a great person to talk to so dave i don't know if now would be a good time to open up to questions that other people might have sure we can we can get started most of the questions at this point are about the library so um before i jump into the questions just remember all of you listeners out there or you who watching um if you'd like to send in your question or comment simply click on the q and a button at the bottom of the zoom screen and uh type in your question. So our first question, I've been taking notes on the side here. Um the first question is to, to some just sort of basic orientation. The the libraries that or the library that you started, are there discussion groups and tutoring and if so, how are you staffing that? Are you how are you paying for people to come in or is it all voluntary? Voluntary. well uh, before starting this uh, library i've talked with my father my mother and uh, my cousins uh, we are we were staying in uh, in one place only so i've talked with them i've discussed with them that i have an idea to start a library so uh, give me some suggestions like uh, um, on you muted yourself sadia sorry the idea to start like where you can start this library so uh yeah the i've discussed first i was i just i've discussed this with my parents with my cousins and they were ready to help me voluntarily also not financially but yeah voluntarily they were ready to help me so i took their help and uh, i was 
I was successfully started that library. And so is there tutoring? How is that happening? Who's who's giving the classes? Uh, uh, she's also um, uh, she's staying near the library only. And uh, she's a graduate student in last year of graduation. Uh, so and she's also practicing uh, that uh, teaching course. So mm -hmm. she also gives two hours per uh, a day in library voluntarily. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, also, there's a lot of questions about the books that you're you're sharing in the library. Are those English? Are they in Hindi? What language are they in? And if people wanted to send books, would you be able to get them or is it better just to send cash? So let's start with the first part. What um, what kind of books do you have there? Um, we have uh, Hindi medium books because uh, in Bihar, um, 80 percent students are from Hindi medium. So most of the students, uh, we have most of the books in Hindi medium. Then also we have in English and Urdu medium. And uh, we have mostly uh, academic books because the main purpose uh, of starting that library is, you know, so uh, they can have the access of academic books so that they can get quality education along with formal education. So they ha uh, we have uh, mostly academic books like from first standard to uh, graduation till graduation in Hindi and English medium. Then uh, along with that, we have some speaking uh, English speaking books, grammar, practicing books, then uh, literature books also we have, uh, comic books we have for students, uh, we have for kids, and also we have some uh, art books for, for uh, like, we have art books, we have some drawing, drawing books also and uh, some uh, books related to technology, like computer and all. Yeah, this much we have. And daily newspapers in English, Urdu, and Hindi media, and monthly magazine. Would you say the best way to support your work, if readers, several people have said they'd like to help and support, is it is the best way to support by sending books to you, or is it better to, to uh, go to your, your, your website where you're uh, raising funds? Well, uh, I would say it would be good uh, if if people will send uh, funds through that uh, link because uh, you know most of the people send books in English and uh, in our village people don't understand much English, so they are trying <laughs> so they are reading in Hindi only. Yeah. Okay. And you so mentioned wait, ahead, you Mark. mentioned Satya that um, when you were doing some of these. Uh, speeches around the country around the citizenship bill people came to know you and they would also donate money to you to buy books um so this is already happening in india yeah there are also questions that they're quite a number of our readers are very impressed by what you've done at a very young age they're curious to know about your parents how do they view this what have they done to to inspire you um what what role have they played in in recent years? Uh, my parents were so supportive, of course. Uh, even some of my close relatives, they were talking against me, but my parents were with me. Uh, well, we uh, like my parents. Their earlier life was in so. They spend their life in poverty. Half of the life they spend uh, in poverty. But now, uh, when after I was born, my father uh, was having a good business. Like okay, uh, so he just used to tell us the story of his past, like how he had suffered, how mom has suffered uh, because of poverty, and he just. Uh, uh, you know, my uh, mother and father both, they just uh, telling us every day that we are not telling you the story so that you can have, uh, you know, you can have sympathy with us. But we are telling you the story so that if you see uh, uh, any people around you who are in need or, you know, who are suffering from anything and you have the ability to help him or her, then you have to do that. So 
so uh, their life story is the you know uh, that's the thing that uh, inspired me or that helps me in my work a lot and do they support your political activism that's one of the questions we got here do they Sorry. support your do they support your activity in politics and in, in fighting the anti citizenship and parting yes in, my involved in the, yep go ahead my father is uh, my father supports me a lot but uh, my mom sometimes while uh, she hear, uh, she uh, heard from her relatives like why are you letting your daughter doing these things she's involving in politics politics is not good for us uh, like this so at that time she disbalanced and uh, she's like don't now enough don't do. do you don't have to do all these things uh, stay at home learn uh, uh, like whatever you are studying academically do that only don't do extra things but my father is so supportive he's like if you want to go in politics i'll stand back to you sounds like a great dad um also, there are questions about um, your faith and how your faith inspires you both for the library and, and in, in your um, speeches. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, my earlier education was uh, is totally, uh, you know, uh, from Arabic medium. Uh, and it's all about Islam and my culture and uh, whatever rules and regulations are there in my uh, religion. So I've learned a lot. Uh, uh, there are things uh, like, you know, about education, about uh, doing charity work, like uh, as for education, I, I told that, uh, you know, uh, education is compulsory on every Muslim, whether he's a girl, whether they are girl or boy, you know, th uh, there is no restrictions that only boys are supposed to get education and not girls. So uh, this is the thing that I strongly hold and uh, I, I, I spread this statement. And uh, the other thing is about charity. When we uh, study about the uh, you know uh, life of uh, Prophet peace be upon him, we come to know that he, he had done lots of charity work, lots of, you know, like, so that inspired me a lot and it is reality that money is just a you know tomorrow i have if today i have maybe tomorrow i don't have what will i do of that money if it will be not useful for someone else so these are the things that i believe and so I've, i'm doing all these things like when we dead what will we take with us. We are not going to take our house. We are not going to take our money with us. We are not going to take a uh, bungalow or car with us. What we are going to take is, uh, you know, how we used that money in changing someone's life. That's, that's beautiful. Thank you, Sadia. Uh, here's, I'm going to read this one, uh, or at least part of it. This is a wonderful event. The monitor brings the world right to our doorstep and the humanity of Sadia is very evident. Can you ask Sadia if she feels women are advancing India in ways that men are not? Is this woman's movement growing? And what role do you see in the future? Right, so there's three questions there, but let's start with, what do you feel is women's, how are women helping to advance India right now? Uh, right now, if uh, we see lots of women are uh, doing good in their life, uh, like, uh, but still at some point I saw that, you know, even in 21st century, Muslim women are backward, are not doing great, but yeah, non-Muslims are, uh, doing a lot of good things. The, the women's are, you know, having, uh, financially, they are financially independent, they are getting uh, high quality educations, and they are doing good. But still, in, uh, in my religion, I saw that we are not progressing as much as we need to. Yeah, so we are working on that. And 
I I hope that someday we can reach at that level too. Uh, we have a question here too about uh, you talked very eloquently about um, your classes and how they've inspired you to um, become more politically active. What do you think is the purpose of higher education now? Has, it, has your perception of that changed? Yes, of course. Uh, as I said that, you know, we are getting good education and after that we have a dream of getting high paid uh, job, then having a good luxurious life. But I don't find any meaning in that, you know, like uh, enjoying. I don't find any meaning of life in all those things because there is no adventures, there is no struggle. I mean, there are struggle, but not uh, something I, I feel. Uh, so, you know, getting quality education, the meaning of getting quality education is should to change someone's life or to change ourselves and first to change ourselves and then change, change someone else's life. It should be like, uh, uh, after studying uh, sociology and philosophy, uh, I've got to learn many things and that I'm practicing. I'm trying to practicing in my everyday life. Uh, so the meaning of getting quality education for me is what we are studying should, uh, we should also practicing all those things in our practice, uh, uh, in our daily life. And and so I have a question here too. What are your plans for the future uh, at, at this point? Uh, I have a lot of plan in different aspects. Like uh, 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 I have a dream to be an international speaker. So I'm working hard for achieving that goal. And uh, I also have a dream to establish uh, an organization successful organization uh, by which I can help a lots of people. And uh, for living a life, I want to start my own business. Well, uh, yeah. What kind of business would you do, Sadia? Uh, that uh, it's difficult for me to now, it's difficult for me now to understand like what kind of business I should start. But my father is uh, giving me ideas to start with him in partnership mm -hmm. uh, he had a business of leather bags like all type of leather bags laptop bags school bag college bag or wallet everything so he's giving the idea to start with him in partnership that's great let's see what yeah one thing i'd like to insert here now sidia you were talking about public speaking and speaking all over the world uh, when we were setting up this interview again, uh, Dave had asked you kind of, who do you look up to? Who do you admire? Who inspires you? And one of the people that you mentioned is uh, one of the activists who's very prominent in the protest that went on in Delhi. Uh, his name is Umar Khalid. And uh, he has been um, uh, kind of cast as a terrorist by the local authorities because he was standing up against the government and standing up uh, much as you've talked about Sadia, you know, trying to stand up for the rights of Muslims and all these things. And in this article that I mentioned earlier, uh, Umar Khalid was, um, was quoted and he said that uh, Sadia is in this point, only 17 years old, but one of the best speakers I have come across. Uh, so that's very high praise from, from one, of your, one of your heroes. Yeah, <laughs> um, he's still in jail. He's, uh, he's still in jail and uh, we are raising our voice on Twitter or social media platform. And uh, it was my dream, uh, you know, to give speeches uh, like him without any fear, very boldly. And uh, I, I was also having a dream to met him. Uh, and due to this anti-citizenship protest only, I got a chance to share a stage with him. And that was so, uh, you know, that, that moment was so uh, joyful for me when I met him. I was also nervous because I also have to give speech at the same time. And I was nervous that I didn't know if I, I, if I delivered speech better than him or, or worse than him. And I was so confused at the time. 
but yeah that speech was uh, uh so good even he praised me for that and he's like you have to come to our state also for supporting the women they need a girl like you and uh, yeah so i met him and i i was like yeah i've fulfilled my this dream <laughs> Well, Mark, I think we're about out of questions. One last question I can toss in that a few people have asked is, so, so Dia, talk a little bit about your vision for the libraries. What do, you have one, two libraries now functioning. What's your vision going forward? And, and I'll, I'll just uh, step off now. Yeah, right now we have two library. Uh, one is in our district and the second one is another district of Bihar only. And, uh, uh, mm, I have a vision to have the same type of library in every district of Bihar. Bihar has a 38 districts, and I want the, this community library in every uh, district of Bihar so that at least we can tackle with the problem of uh, child laboring or child uh, early child marriage, or uh, we can help them in. Uh, tackling unemployment issues also. And in future, I also have a plan that when I complete my master's, uh, we are, my, me and my dad is planning to start a school also in uh, Bihar. Great. Yeah, so overall, this is the vision. And uh, I don't want this to be uh, to be limited only in Bihar, but all over the India. That's amazing. So I, I will I will finish with one more of my own question um, before we leave. But I just want to there's a quick note that just I want to share with our readers. Um, there's a there's a feature that we're adding to these webinars now that immediately following the webinar, there's going to be an opportunity for you all for the for the people who are uh, tuning in to discuss this topic with all the other attendees. So, you know, what are your reactions to Sadia's story? And have you seen similar instances of resilience and hope among the skepticism of your community? So what advice would you provide for young people in your community to expand educational opportunities and resources? These sorts of things, you know, just starting the idea, the conversation. So the floor will be open to all different sorts of ideas and conversations. Uh, that chat will be moderated and will outline the ground rules for the chat in this window after the call. So. Um, just stay on after this if you'd like to participate in that. Uh, last thing, we'll be including uh, a link uh, and a very short survey that you'll be seeing that soon, and we'd love to hear what you think about this webinar. Uh, my last question for you, Sadia, is that, you know, um, you talked about how when you were in college, uh, you know, your professor said, go out and participate as long as you don't involve us. <laughs> you know, it's kind of all on your head. And you talk about your relationship uh, with, you know, someone who you really look, look up to, like Umar Khalid. Uh, and, you know, you see him standing up for his rights and being called a terrorist and being put in jail. How do you, how do you keep your humanity, uh, even amid uh, all the challenges that you see, uh, the things that might be setbacks, uh, how do you stay hopeful and how do you stay uh, compassionate towards towards all? Uh, so basically whatever happens in our country and still whatever happening in our country, you know, every day we used to hear the news of uh, mob lynching or the news of uh, rape crimes or, you know, like, like this. And... Uh, at the age of seven, till the age of 17, I was in a dream that, you know, we are living in a world as this democratic country where we have the freedom to tell that I am living in a, uh, India and I am an Indian Muslim. But when I turned to 18, I felt like, you know, I was in a dream. I was in a dream and someone just woke me up. Okay, hello, now you are in a reality world whatever happens, uh, uh, like anti-citizenship protest, then uh, then uh, Kashmir incident article, uh, abrogation of article 370, then now love jihad and whatever is happening right now. And at, till the age of 17, when we uh, saw movies or, uh, you know, web series or serials, we found uh, a hero and we admired them. And 
I also admire lots of heroes, and I thought that you know, in reality, also there were police like, uh, like Shahrukh, like uh, Ajay Devgan, or there are some uh, chief minister like Sunil Shetty. There are police like uh, uh, Akshay. Big but movie stars, when, people who can yeah, be real heroes. Yeah, I I thought that you know, um, there are heroes like them in reality also, but. after one year i realized that no one is there to hmm. raise their voice like them then we have to be our own hero because no one is going to come to save us and no one is going to come uh, to raise their voice for us so we have to be our own hero and we can do this because i feel that you know uh, if we wrong someone we cannot forgive we cannot uh, you know uh, ask forgiveness from god until he won't forgive you unless a person you wrong forgives you and no religion teaches you to harm others in the name of their god and uh, so whatever is happening is wrong and i know that we are not opposing that bjp party we are opposing the idea of that bjp party whatever the ideology they are following or they are doing so how can we are uh, like we are not against the uh, people of this country we are not against the people of this country but we are against the ideology of the people who are dividing us in the name of religion because no no uh, none of the religion teach us to harm everyone so religion is not wrong here the people are not wrong here but the ideology of that government is wrong so we are fighting against them we are not wrong and this gave me the uh, uh, you know this gave me the power like i am not wrong here i'm not doing anything wrong i am not harming someone i'm not uh, uh, doing wrong so uh, these are the things that uh, you know feel me these are the things that encouraging me or empowering me to uh do all these things and not stopping me from whatever i'm doing you can be your own bollywood superhero yeah <laughs> <laughs> i you yeah, i've i've even written one poem in uh, our hindi language on all these things like transferring from 17 year old to 18 year old how i was dreaming at that time and now what is the reality yeah. uh it was it was in uh, my own language so <laughs> you won't understand but i would love to uh send you if if i i could write it in english maybe what we can do is we can get that and we can translate it and maybe include it in uh, what we send out to people after the event at some point we'd love to read that yeah well thank you sidia it's just wonderful to talk to you and very inspiring and uh, everything that we hoped it would be and we just wish you all the best going forward um for everything that you're doing um Just want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Dave Scott, uh, their engagement editor, for fielding all these wonderful questions and comments. And just all, also want to uh, thank the people who all made this possible, who aren't on the screen. Um, our events team, led by promotion and events manager Lauren Crandall, producer Greg Fitzgerald, and Lena Carlson and Rachel Schuller. Uh, the monitor's product owner is Kim Proctor, and we do hope that you will uh, participate in the chat session that will follow. And again, you'll find the instructions on screen in just a little bit. Um, and now, Sadia and I will be uh, closing down our video. And for those who want to wait, just stick on this for a little bit, and uh, you'll get any instructions on how to do the chat. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining the monitor in this community connect event. Take care.